Hi everyone, here's my quick video um, just how to get started on acrylic pouring and um, the stuff that I've found that you need to get started. Here is my uh, bag of tricks here for pouring. I just got these empty containers for a couple bucks at a local store. I've got my PVA glue from Home Hardware to do some pours. Liquidex pouring medium, but this is great, but it's expensive. I just got this from my local store. Look how big it is. From Wallex. And this was 20 bucks for all of this pouring medium. Pouring medium. This was 20 bucks for all of this pouring medium, so I'm very excited to try that. I also just got this golden GAC 800 to prevent uh, cracking and crazing. Um, here's my cat again, just making an appearance. I've got my liquid wrench. This is a silicone I use. You can get that at Canadian Tire, Home Hardware, De Home Depot, stuff like that. I'm Canadian, so this is... I'm mentioning Canadian stores, but you know in the US you can get it anywhere. I put a little bit of that spray into a bottle like this so I could drip it in by the drops. And doing that, it burns off some of the aerosol chemicals in there that are mixed with the silicone. So you're left, you can leave the top off and let it dissipate and you're left with silicone and maybe some more butane or other chemicals in there. I have some face primer that I'm gonna try that has dimethicone in it. I have my spray bottle of diluted dish soap, but I'm seeing videos on that. I'm not really happy with the results that gives. It gives very small cells. 70% rubbing alcohol in the spray, Mod Podge, that's like a glue, um, here's just my water bottle, I got some di distilled water, I'm going to put that in there, I've, I've just been using tap water up until now, uh, and then I just got this too, Liquitex Flow Aid, and you mix this, I just mix this in this bottle here to squirt it out of uh, 20 to 1, so 20 water. I didn't have the distilled water at that time, but this is just tap water. But I would have put distilled in if I had had it. 20 to 1. One part this stuff. So I'm going to put a squirt, a few squirts of that into my cups. And that's my whole kit and caboodle for all of the pouring mediums and stuff like that. I'm very eager to try this though. I've also got... Um, gloves to put on. I try to reuse them because I hate um, wasting plastic and hate throwing plastic away. So I let these dry out and they're still usable. I have a spatula for swiping. You want to swipe the surface tension off so that the silicone and the cells pop through. And this is just an icing. I got this at home hardware. Again, it's an icing um, spatula. So you can get that in cake or homeware stores too. Also a chef's torch. This is, uh, you can get them in butane, the bigger butane torches, but this is, um, or propane, sorry, but this is butane and then you just fill it from the bottom. You get a refill and this is a chef's torch. I got that from Canadian Tire. This was $24 with four creme brulee little cute little dishes. So I really got a deal on that. And then I also use my heat gun, my heat tool. This I got at Michael's and I use that in watercolors and all sorts of other art, arts and crafts and art, uh, fine art paintings and stuff. So that's good for enlarging cells and just heating up areas and blowing it a little bit. It doesn't really blow it a lot. You can also get one of these torches that are like um, um, a lighter, but they're, there you can see the flame is pointed. See that? Um, and you can get those mostly anywhere. Hardware stores, Walmart, that kind of thing. I also use a straw for blowing. Also in my arsenal I have scissors, um, just a cheap paintbrush to put on gesso, this kind of foam brush, um, a big spoon for mixing my white house paint, and doling it out into the cups. These are really cheap stir sticks, just popsicle sticks. And then of course cups to mix your your pores in. And I have a mix. Again, I try to use them again. I pulled the acrylic out of these ones 
and they're clean enough to use. I don't like using styrofoam, of course, because the environment, but they were, I really wanted to get started and that's all that was av available. Eventually I'm gonna get paper cups. Okay, other things I haven't mentioned yet are Floatrol. Floatrol is um, a leveling acrylic paint medium and improves the flow, so I got some of that. Um, I also got some more PVA glue. This is a nat natural one. It has less solvents and stuff in there, so I hope that's good for mixing. But I have my big bottle of pouring medium now, so we'll see which is better. I got some acetone, because that's one thing to try in pours, along with alcohol and silicone. Um, you'll want to get these plastic drop sheets to put down. And I also, as you can see here, I have um, black plastic garbage bags put down, which are kind of a cheaper thing than these. These are like two or three bucks each at my local home hardware and the garbage bags are, you can get a whole box for a couple bucks and I just cut them open. Popsicle sticks, you can get a lot of those for cheap. And then uh, some sort of cup for pouring dirty pours with. Um, I just clean this out every time. It's just an old packing jar for orange marmalade I got from the cottage. Also a good thing is to get these tacks that you can put on the bottom of your painting like this one. See how I put them in there. And you'll see others do this in other, other videos on YouTube too. Because then you can sort of pick it up and hold it by that and you can put your fingers under it like that. This is my last pour that I did. Um, you can also pour in UPO paper. I have some here, which is a plastic paper, and then use cheap canvases or good canvases or sheets of plastic, which I also got from the uh, like house wrap, that really thick plastic that you wrap houses in. I'm going to do some pours on there to do skins. So right here I'm preparing my canvas, which is too loose. I'm fixing it up and making it tighter. Uh, please go see, I have another video on that, um, on how to fix a loose canvas. It's a really quick fix, so go check out that video. And then the last thing I'm gonna do here is place um, these sort of high thumbtacks in the back of the canvas. And what that does is it ena enables you to uh, put your fingers under the canvas and it raises the canvas up off the board so the paint doesn't drip all around it. So as it dries, the painting doesn't get all stuck in the paint. So then you just nail them in with a hammer and you're done. And just watch out that you don't um, try to hit it in the center. So if you hit it on the side, the edges can chip off. And then the only other thing I forgot to mention Is it's good to have a level so you want to make sure your surface is level see my surface is totally not level but you can change that you can just see so move that up like that and and make it level just um, you can pull out the pins and change it that way and then you want to look at it this way too Do I have no room here that looks pretty good actually kind of in the middle yeah so and then the very last thing that you'll need is, um, well, you don't have to have this, but I've got mine on my floor. I've got a very small apartment, so I'm arting in my living room, if you can believe that. I've got this table set up here. See, with all my stuff, I've got my little, this is an ot light, so it's natural light. You don't get that yellow light. I've got a, um, this is just a clamp to put my iPad mini on to film down with. And then on the floor, I've got garbage bags. And yep, that's my kitchen rug, or my living room rug right there. So I'm taking my chances. But anyway, this is an, an IKEA underbed box. And as you can see, I do some arting in there. And then uh, I've got a table right there that I can fasten my camera to to film when I'm spinning a record in there and covering it or if I need to do it on the floor. And then this cover is really great to cover the box like that when that's up there. Even my cat gets up there and it doesn't push through. So, so it's really great when you want to cover up your art um, and let it dry. 
I just put the top on and my cat has jumped up there before and it doesn't like it doesn't buckle down of course you have to put that lip on over there I'm just not gonna do it right now but um, my cat has gotten up there and it hasn't fallen through so it protects against cats and there are the garbage bags on the floor which are super cheap to put out instead of those um, painter plastic ones but I do have my table here covered in plastic and then garbage bags that I can replace. So here are just a couple of still shots of my uh, pouring space. This is in my living room in my tiny apartment. This is during the day and uh, it's pretty cramped but at least I have some light. Here it is at night and I have my ot light on and my little camera filming thing there. Um, so you know, even if you have a real little space, you can still do this messy acrylic pouring, at least I do. See, I even got it splattered all over my lamp there, but what can I say? Art is totally worth the mess. Okay, here we are in another small room of my teeny tiny apartment. Um, and I forgot to mention, you're also going to need space. You're going to need drying space. So I have this Ikea rack here with some craft stuff there in the bottom. And then here I have some um, things. This is where I lay my painting out to dry. These are already dried, but also I find these tacks can get kind of annoying to um, just to deal with. I don't know. And so you could also use just a container like this just to put your, um, your canvas on and you can put your fingers underneath that way. So you don't have to have the tacks um, and sometimes they can be a bit annoying to tell you the truth. Um, but anyway, you're, you're definitely going to need space. So, um, you know, a rack like this or some sort of rack where you can put a few paintings to dry at once is definitely an advantage. I forgot to mention you're going to need something to paint on. So of course there is the traditional canvases, but you can also use Yupo paper, which is a plastic paper. Um, and you can, uh, you might have seen... Seriously? She just can't stay out of the videos. It's like impossible. <laughs> That's Lady Tiger Lily. Anyway, you can also paint on records, but I would advise, um, you know, first priming them with gesso first at least because you can see the middle label through when the paint dries. Um, I got these records from a local record shop and instead of paying for records you just go and ask them for their cheapest records and they usually have a stash at the back where they'll get rid of them for like 10 for $10 or I got these 8 for $10 so you can get them really cheap. And I also painted on uh, with the mess that's left over from the drippings from the canvas. You can paint on Yupo paper or, or other types of paper, but I also did a few really successful paintings on tile and they were really great. Like you could just dip them in. Um, I'm going to be posting an upcoming video with showing that process where I painted on the tiles. Then of course, I forgot to mention, you need paint. So there's uh, most of my acrylic paint stash. That's um, spray paint. That is Beauty Tone Designer. That is Beauty Tone Designer Silk White House Paint. Acrylic Loft White, and then I've got a whole bunch of um, various acrylic paints in there and I also have an acrylic um, a Liquitex set of like 25 colors or something so anyway on with the experimentation I hope that was a good starting um, sort of tutorial or suggestion for materials on how to get started in acrylic pouring take care